Good afternoon, everyone, and many thanks, uh, Nina, for this exhaustive presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, my pleasure to, to present you the update of the ProVac strategy. And uh, for people who, who were there um, at the meeting last year, I'm uh, so sorry because the results I have didn't change this year. So I will present in the first part of my talk the results I presented last year. And after, how do I move to, uh, to a provincial program? So uh, the second thing that didn't change since last year, it's my so sexy accent. So enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the plan of the, the presentation. So briefly, the, the concept of the Promovac uh, studies and uh, future prospect, and after I move uh, forward with the ME program. So how was born the Promovac concept? Uh, I will uh, uh, have a brief history of uh, this concept, and maybe we will uh, better understand how a poor French uh, neonatologist is trying to implement a public health program in Quebec now. <laughs> so uh, the, the concept was born with clinical and research experience and the research in literature. Uh, my first clinical experience was when I, uh, in my past life when I worked in France in a pediatric intensive care unit. I have to take care of infants who suffer from uh, nonococcal or meningococcal meningitis. And I have an experience with a mother who uh, uh, lost his uh, young boy of six months old from uh, uh, neurococcal mesitidis. And when I asked her why uh, this young boy wasn't vaccinated, uh, the answer of the mother was only, I did not know. I did not know the disease exists. I did not know the vaccine exists. And I uh, didn't do the vaccine because he has a common cold. So, I think there is, uh, I, I know that uh, information is not sufficient for vaccine hesitancy, but the lack of information, it's a, a major concern to my mind. After I have a research experience, I conducted a study in uh, Brittany, in Brest area, uh, for the, rotavirus, the effectiveness of the rotavirus vaccination. We implemented a program uh, in the region, and uh, all the investigators, the general practitioners, the pediatrician, uh, after a few months after the beginning of the study, asked me uh, it was very difficult to recruit patients because at two months uh, we spoke about the vaccine with the parents, but the parents want to have more time to take the decision. So it was very difficult to speak about the vaccine and give the vaccine the same way. So we moved to uh, implement an educational session in multi wards to present the rotavirus disease and the program of vaccination offered to the parents. And the feedback of the, all uh, of the investigators was so great, there is a high level of acceptability with the parents because they have time to take the decision. So it it's a start to became a protocol in my mind of if he could work with rotavirus vaccine, he could work for, with all the vaccine. And after research uh, in literature, I saw that there is often failure of traditional educational methods, but maybe motivational interviewing techniques will be a promising tool to address this concern. So uh, the provide concept was to give an educational session at birth, but using motivational interviewing techniques to give the information to the parents. So but briefly, uh, what is EMI? And you will have uh, tomorrow, there is a high demand to have a workshop of, uh, in motivational interviewing. And I hope after uh, the workshop, EMI will be not only magical intervention or mysterious intervention, but <laughs> really, what is it? A motivational uh, interviewing techniques. Uh, few, few, few points very important. Uh, EMI is not only a discussion. It's goal-oriented. It's a style of communication with oriented to a goal, uh, with a particular attention to the long term of change, and it is designed to strengthen the personal motivation to a specific goal. And you, you should elicit and explore the person's own reasons for change. And maybe we join what, uh, what John presents before me. And I think there is lots of similitude between your approach and the motivational interior techniques. So, and you should do that with an atmosphere of acceptance and compassion. And so, uh, IMAI uh, has been described as a promising tool for the health promotion strategy. So, very briefly, you, you will see 
all of that in details tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> there is four key processes uh, with EMI. It's uh, engaging the Russian team, ship, sorry, focusing, evoking, and planning. And you can use several skills as use open questions, affirmations, uh, use reflective listening. Yes, I think it looks like the, the mirrors you, pre you present uh, just before. Uh, summarize and to use uh, is elicite, share, and elicite. So we have built a five point information plan of vaccination. And the most important thing that this vac information plan of vaccination is easily indistable for parents. And the goal of the vaccination plan is to directly adapted to the parents or not to a doctor, but to a parents. And we have five points, uh, classically, uh, the presentation of the vaccination, vaccine presentable disease, uh, the vaccine and vaccine efficacy. Uh, the step three is more important to explain parents what is, wh why it is important to start the vaccination at two months or not three or not four, but two months. And uh, the next step is the fears and reluctance about vaccination and the logistic organization of the vaccination. So we use uh, EMI techniques and we use to uh, the process stages to give the information <laughs> to parents. Process stages are all the stages that uh, individual goes through to change the behavior. So <clears throat> we adapt the intervention to the, to the stage of vaccination intention of the parents. If you have a parents in the pre-contemplation or contemplation stages, uh, is not, uh, you couldn't speak about the organization of vaccination, the benefit of vaccination with it is not, uh, is not be very uh, efficacious. So you could only uh, uh, speak about, uh, with him about his fears. And maybe if you solve this problem, you could see with him if he could see some advantage to vaccination. And you should adapt your dialogue to the initial position of the parents. So now I will present uh, briefly the results of the Promovac studies. So the Promovac studies was, were to assess the effectiveness of an information session, targeting immunization based on EMI techniques in multi wards, uh, on vaccination intention in parents, and vaccination coverage in infants. The first study was a regional cohort study uh, that we uh, built in uh, Eastern Townships uh, in Quebec. <coughs> and the first result that we have it's after the intervention. We have an increase of vaccination intention in parents of 15%. Uh, and we have the confirmation with following, following the cohort and uh, the vaccination coverage in infants with an increase at seven months of age of 7% of vaccination coverage. And most important, we follow the cohort until two years of age of the infants. And we show we have a remaining effect with an increase of vaccination coverage until two years of age. Uh, <clears throat> the intervention is only focused on the two to six months vaccines. There is no information about the other vaccines, but we have still an effect with all the vaccine during the, the zero to two years period. So we have the confirmation with the logistic regression that uh, demonstrated uh, that we have uh, that infants who parents receive the interventions in multi wards have a 9% more chance to have a complete vaccination schedule in the zero to two years periods. And it was confirmed that by the multivariate analysis that indicated that intervention is still an independent factor that explains the increase in vaccination coverage. So after this study, we move to uh, provincial randomized control trial uh, in four uh, maternity wards in Quebec, uh, in uh, Montreal with McGill University for the Anglophone population, uh, with St. Justine for the Francophone population, in Sherbrooke and in Quebec town. And we have the same results. Uh, 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 <clears throat> there is some regional disparities in each town, but we have the same results. We have an increase in each, each town, and we have a significant global increase of 12% of vaccination intentions in parents. We measure to the impact on the parental vaccination hesitancy score, and we have a de significant decrease in each center of a global decrease of uh, the parental vaccination hesitancy score of 40% in all the population in the study. 
And the more interesting is that we have on the high level of vaccine hesitancy, we have a reduction by a factor of three for the high level of vaccination hesitancy score. And after the intervention, there was only 5% uh, of parents who remain with a high level of vaccination hesitancy score. So we have some partial data on vaccination coverage because uh, during the study, we move from regional uh, registry to national registry. So uh, we have the authorization for the regional registry, but not for the national registry. And it takes one year to solve this problem. So we will have all the data at the end of the year for the zero to two years period. But on the half of the results shows that there is still an increase of vaccination coverage at six months of age. So What's, what works uh, with this strategy? Uh, maybe the first, thing, uh, the first thing I think is because there is no conflict of interest with the counselor, uh, because he's not going to vaccinate the child. He has not a needle behind his back and say, do you want to, to, to have the vaccine? Yes, you want, I, I'm going to, to, to vaccinate it. So there is no, no conflict of interest. The parents have time to take the decision because the interventions uh, occur two months before the first vaccine. And maybe with the tailored information and use the motivational interview techniques, you could reduce the stress about vaccination for the parents. And more interesting, I think with uh, an intervention specifically tailored to the needs of the parents, you going on the determinant of the vaccination for, for each parent specifically, because we know all the determinants of vaccination for the population, but for each parent, he have his own determinant of vaccination, and you should adapt the information you give to the parents to his specific needs, and not to give him too much information, unnecessary information. Because I think the decisional process for the parents for vaccination looks maybe like that, and it's, uh, he has some lots of determinants of vaccination. There is a lot of controversies about vaccination, and it leads to a great ambivalence about his decision about vaccination. And with EMI skills, you help parents to solve himself uh, his ambivalence about vaccination, and maybe it's connected to a more robust decisional process about vaccination. Maybe it explains why we have a remaining effect at two years of age without information with, for the other vaccines. So after the first Promovac with a little c, the Promovac with a big Q, now the Promovac with a big C for the RCT in Canada. So we have just started a randomized control trial in five provinces in British Columbia, Nova Scotia, uh, Prince Edward Island, Ontario, and Quebec. <coughs> we have started the recruitment uh, before this summer, and we want to validate uh, this uh, strategy in different cultural contexts and a different program of vaccination. So last year, I was very happy to present uh, the project of an uh, international air city, but unfortunately, we failed to obtain fine. But uh, some of you were very, very exciting to, to move on. I, with SAD, I think we're going to, to move uh, uh, in the US, and I will try to, to submit another grant to, to do more studies in, uh, in other countries. So and now, what is the situation now in Quebec? So in Quebec, we move from the Promovac strategy to a provincial program to implement uh, this intervention uh, in Mati Wards uh, in the practice of care in Quebec. So we build uh, with the collaboration of the <coughs> uh, Ministry of Health, and I should acknowledge the Ministry of Health with Monique, <laughs> thank you very much, for this great motivation to implement this program. Uh, as you could see as a proof of the effectiveness, efficacy of EMI. With EMI, you could even motivate government. So now, <laughs> and we could uh, drastically reduce the daily gap between the research and real life uh, between 17 years to one year and uh, with the great motivation of the government. So last year, I was very happy to be here to, to share knowledge with each other and very happy to, to see the Nick Sevladis presentation about the implementation science. And I say, wow, it's absolutely what I need now. Fantastic. So, and uh, we try, the challenges are to uh, start from the results of the Promovac study and to implement uh, into the EMI program. Uh, I don't know if I said to you, but EMI program, it's a French acronym for motivational interviewing in magic words for immunization of children. So uh, this is, 
uh, in uh, the studies, we have a high fidelity and uh, it should be adapted to the real needs of the population. Uh, maybe uh, the study uh, occurred as attended. To my experience, sometimes studies didn't occur as attended, but <laughs> maybe it's more difficult in the uh, program. Uh, we should ensure sustainability and we should adapt uh, our intervention. And we are going to train vaccination counselors, are not going to train research nurses now, and we're going to adapt the intervention for all the parents in Quebec and to have some perennial funds from the Ministry of Health. In implementation science, we have some several specific outcomes that we're going to measure in the implementation of the program. It's uh, acceptability, adoption, mm -hmm. Feasibility, fidelity, and, uh, and most important, the sustainability. So <coughs> we're going to, to explore to all of this outcome of our program. So the EMI program uh, was uh, possible uh, because uh, the federal government initiated last year an immunization partnership fund to give subventions, annual subventions for projects aimed to improve vaccination coverage in Canada. So we applied and succeed with the French, uh, sorry, French, my past life, <laughs> the Quebec Ministry of Health. <laughs> sorry, Monique, <laughs> first love. <laughs> uh, to implement the Promovac strategy in Mati Wards in Quebec. So uh, we're going to, to, to make the first phase of the program with funds from the federal government to evaluate the, uh, the implementation of the program and the uh, Quebec Ministry of Health, we found the, the, core, the program itself. Uh, it will be a two years program. And so we will implement, it, implement it, uh, the uh, strategy in all the MATI wards with more than 2,500 annual births. It represents more than half of the Quebec annual births. And it will occur in 13 MATI wards in six administrative regions. So the aim of the first phase of the ME program is to assess the implementation and impact on the program in real life. We have specific aims, uh, the description of the implementation of the program and the one of the aim is to build an implementation guide uh, of the program to promote it uh, in all maternity wards, uh, to identify barriers and facilitators of implementation, and to assess the impact on the pro of the program on the vaccine intention and vaccine hesitancy score in parents, and on vaccine courage in children in uh, Quebec. And according to the results of the evaluation program, we program to, to move on to the phase two of the program EMI in the two following years. Uh, that will be the implementation of the program in all the maternity wards in Quebec and adoption of this educational session at birth as a new public health policy. So we have to build uh, an organizational framework to build the program. And I should acknowledge uh, Danielle Auger from the uh, Quebec Ministry of Health. She's a coordinator in infectious disease and leader in immunization. And she's very helpful to implement the, the program at the uh, level of the ministry. Uh, we have created a directory committee uh, who is responsible to, for the timeline, the budget, the gestion tool, the reduction of the project, the long-term vision of the program and the supervision of the program as the evaluation. We have a coordination committee who makes the links between the different phase and function of the program. We manage the program and it supports the implementation of the program. Uh, we have a planification organization committee that makes the links between all of the Ministry of Health directions, uh, makes a communication plan for the program and make the links between all the hospital directions, the public health direction. And it's very important for the first step of the implementation of the program. We have an operational committee too, uh, that is responsible for the selection of the resource committee and to uh, recruit the counselor and to train and supervise uh, the counselor. And finally, we have a uh, evaluation committee to evaluate uh, the implementation of the impact of the program and to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to build a guideline for the implementation of the program. So we should take several uh, strategic decisions. The first decision was, uh, is there still uh, staff in Matty Wards to do the program without additional resources? 
And the answer was no. We couldn't do that with, additional, <laughs> with no additional resources. Donc, the first uh, decision was we should put additional resource, staff resources in multi wards. The second decision was uh, should be nurses or not nurses. In Quebec, to find uh, lots of nursing, it's uh, very difficult. So where the decision was it's not mandatory to be nurses, but it could be medical staff with uh, initial training in uh, scientist and medical training, but it should not mandatory to be nurses to be a con vaccination counselor. So uh, those vaccine, we created a new job that is a vaccination counselor. So uh, the counselors uh, will receive an immunization training. Uh, he was based on the uh, website uh, Quebec Immunization Protocol Program, and we had a specific immunization training uh, with a, a guide, a specific guide that we will build for the ME program on immunization because we want to have a specifically adapted uh, intervention for the parents and we selected all the information that the counselor should give to the parents and how to give them to the parents. Uh, we uh, created that in collaboration with each regional public health direction to train trainers in each region that would be responsible to, to, to train each counselor of the region. Uh, after, uh, the counselor will receive a, a motivational interview and training, and it will be a very important part of the program because it's the core, the heart of the program. So the counselor will have first a two-day session by two certified trainers. And after this two-day session, they will have a training period of two, three weeks in multi wards. They should uh, send an audio recording of intervention to the trainers and have feedback with the trainers uh, with this audio recording. After, they will have a one-day feedback session following by another two weeks periods uh, of uh, training in multi wards with another audio recording and a trainer's visits on site to validate that the counselor is able to use EMI skills to, to give the intervention. And during the implementation uh, of the program, uh, there will be uh, one uh, annual audio recording and one annual visit for the trainers to each counselor to validate that it's a, a good way to give information to parents. And we're going to create a community of practice, uh, of practice sorry, uh, for all the counselor uh, each other. So uh, we're going to evaluate lots of outcome for the implementation of the impact of the program at different level, at the level of the vaccination counselor, uh, the multi wards HCP, the manager, the administrator. We're going to have a combined methodology of uh, qualitative and quantitative data, use some questionnaire. The MIT is a tool used to evaluate the audio recording for motivational interviewing. We're going to use administrative data of Martin Schwartz, the field diary and counselor, individual meeting and focus group uh, to uh, evaluate lots and lots of outcomes. And maybe I'm not going to, to give you all the details of the outcome, but we want to uh, evaluate the implementation processes of the program. And after, we're going to evaluate too the impact on the program uh, on the parents with uh, the vaccination hesitancy score and vaccination intention score, the knowledge about vaccination. I want to uh, look at the fidelity uh, and the difference between the results of the program studies and the results of the evaluation of the program. And uh, in children recruited in the program, we are going to look at the vaccination coverage for the zero to two years periods, uh, the long-term uh, efficacy at uh, three, six, and 12 years, the age of vaccination, the number of day under immunized, uh, the place of vaccination, the sociodemographic data, and uh, the fidelity and difference between our results in study and the results in the program. And we're going to use for that the Quebec Provincial Registry of Vaccination. So that is the timeline of the ME program. It's a very, very tiny, it's very difficult, but uh, to date, we are not late. Uh, the protocol is uh, going. The information about the program to the public health uh, regional, uh, regional direction, the hospital direction, the Ministry of Health, the Matthew Watt administration was done in the spring of the summer. And many thanks to the help for the, uh, for the Ministry of Health. I conducted a very, very good job for that. The recruitment of the councillor are starting this month. And the training of the councillor uh, will start in November. 
uh, we collect the data during the, the year of implementation and we're going to start the analysis after the, the first years of implementation. Uh, we're going to have analysis too for the vaccination coverage, uh, start in the beginning of 2019, and we're going to follow the cohort until uh, 2031. I will have data until my retirement now. So, uh, what is the future direction? Uh, uh, with the results of the phase one of the program, uh, we want to uh, follow uh, the total implementation of the strategy in all maturity uh, wards in Quebec with uh, perennial funds by the Ministry of Health. And the goal is to improve the vaccination coverage in 5 to 10% uh, in children in Quebec. Uh, maybe uh, with this program, can, could we change the vaccination perception in the population? Uh, we have uh, 19,000 uh, 90, uh, births in Quebec, so it represents, if you we reach the two parents, it represents annually 2% of the global Quebec population. And uh, maybe the program could, reach, could be reached by 20% of all the Quebec population over 10 years periods. And it may be uh, the majority of the parents uh, could be reached in this period. So uh, maybe you know the, the well-known book of Michael Gladwell, The Tipping Point. It could be sufficient to, to join a critical mass of population to change the vaccination perception in Quebec. Uh, I don't know if we could change the brain of the Quebec population with the, this approach, <laughs> as you could see uh, uh, with you talk before. But maybe we could have a herd immunity about a good perception of vaccination uh, with this program. So I want to uh, acknowledge uh, all my research team uh, who conducted the, the previous study and the study actually uh, done. And the Emily, EMI collaboration team, it's a very, very uh, important and effective team. We recruit two uh, nurses who were uh, head leaders in uh, public health, who were in retirement and now she come to work with us. And she, she are very, very helpful uh, for the knowledge in all the organization of the public health in Quebec and, who, and all the members of its the committee. So, and uh, now, thank you for your attention.